Hello, I am Dr. El Arzi. I have been using the Mazor system for the last six years for nearly all of my pediatric and adult deformity cases, as well as adult degenerative and MIS cases. Today, I will introduce the basic surgical technique for the Mazor Stealth Edition Surgical Robotic System. This is our operating room setup. We have the a robotic arm mounted to the surgical table already. We have the patient positioned. We have the patient draped. We have the surgical arm draped with our uh, special dedicated drape. And we are ready to start. So this is the first step of the mounting. Now, the second step of the mounting is attaching the robotic arm to the patient's anatomy the shunt spin connector, which is on this side, connected to a shunt spin going to the PSIS, to the pelvis, because we're operating on the lower lumbar spine. And it will attach, attach to the uh, robotic arm with a flexible, manageable uh, uh, attachment that can be completely locked. So now we have the robotic arm secured to the patient's anatomy. Now, if we were to do a longer uh, percutaneous construct, for example, a, 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 a thoracic spine fracture, we would use this, which we call MIS bridge. It has two threaded pins that would fit in the spinous process of the patient, and it will hold the anatomy like that, and then will be attached to the robotic arm with this bridge here, which attaches to the, to the MIS bridge. If we were to do a, an open procedure, we would use a spinous process clamp. This is the spinous process clamp. It will attach to the spinous process of the patient and then attach to the robotic arm with a rigid bridge. Once we're done with the mounting and we have a secure connection between the robotic arm and the patient's anatomy, we are ready to start with operation of the robotic arm. So we are going to do what we call redefine. The purpose of this step is to define the safe zone for the robotic arm movement. We do not want the robotic arm to collide with anything that it is in the operative field. So the arm will have a, a camera here that will screen the, uh, the surgical field and create a three-dimensional model of every obstacle or drape or patient anatomy that might come in the way of movement of the robotic arm. The reason we use a, another drape is to enhance contrast for this infrared camera and to avoid reflection from, operative, uh, from uh, operating room lights and so on. So it is going to take five different pictures to create the 3D model. We can see on, this, on the screen here that the system created a 3D model of our operative field. So now the, the robotic arm can move safely without bumping into any objects. So next step will be a snapshot. Please send to snapshot. The snapshot uh, step is necessary for the calibration of the robotic arm with the navigation system, with the optic navigation system. So we attach an optical marker to the robotic arm and we just take one snapshot. So this is done. Next step, um, is to tell the system which spine segment is to be operated on, where the spine segment is located 
in relation to the robotic arm. So we take the stylus and we point it to the center point of the uh, uh, spine segment to be operated on. Once this is acquired, 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 thank you, we can send the surgical arm to hold the star marker. The star marker is a plastic material marker. It has four metal beads embedded and it will be held by the robotic arm on top of the center of the spine segment to be operated on. And that's, as I explained before, to enable the system to identify the location of the spine segment in the arm scan. So before you do the arm scan, you have to make sure that all four beads appear in the arm picture, both in the AP and the lateral view. Already planned uh, screws from L2 to L4, as you can see on the left of the screen. And we are going to demonstrate uh, the planning process for the remaining vertebra in our spinal segment. So the first step is to add the implant. You, you could see uh, Jan over there pressing the add button and those screwed screws appeared, the two screws, the left and the right. And now we can adjust them to the perfect position. And on the left of the screen, you can see that as you go on, as you go, you can verify the location in relation to the previous screws and to uh, enable proper rod alignment and easy insertion of the rod for MIS case and also for open cases for easier access with your instruments. You can uh, choose different angles to, um, to avoid, uh, to avoid uh, soft tissue retraction and uh, also uh, are able to verify that you are staying away of the, uh, the facet joint if uh, this is to be, uh, to be kept uh, with a lot of motion. So uh, Jan, will, uh, Jan will plan it in, in the axial view. And once he's happy with his position on the axial view, he will move on. Now, if you right click the button, the, the screw, Jan, you will be able to see the screw proper properties window where you can choose the size of the screw, the length of the screw, and also the type of screw system you are using that's on the top windows. So once you're happy with what you did on the actual view, you have to roll it slice by slice to make, to make sure that, uh, that, it, that your uh, trajectory is good throughout the pedicle. And then you want to verify the location of the screws. No, no, on, the, on, on at least one more view. So axial and lateral is, is the minimal. Two views you want to adjust your screw position in. And there going slice by slice, you're making sure that you don't have any uh, breach throughout the trajectory of the screw. This, the, we, this is, this is, an, uh, this is a, a coronal, uh, coronal segment, coronal cuts. All right, so uh, now that we are done with our construct and we are happy with the planning, we have all that we need to execute the screw. So please, Jan, you can send the surgical arm to the first screws. So the robotic arm has uh, finished its, uh, its uh, travel. 
and now it is locked to the trajectory we have previously planned for L2 on the right. So because we are doing a, an MIS case here, we're going to perform a skin incision just for the screw insertion. We then introduce the first working canal. I'm going to push the working canal all the way down until I reach to the bone. So this is the this is the channel stylus which I use to verify the location of my starting point. You will be able to see that the navigation is right where the, pre, the, the planning is. So we are happy with the trajectory and uh, we can go ahead and drill our trajectory. The uh, teeth uh, canal, it has sharp teeth at the end and it will uh, attach to the bony anatomy. So I let it fall down very gently down the tube and then I use a mallet to tap it into the starting point. So now I have a firm connection attachment to the starting point. I uh, verify with two fingers that it doesn't move, that is... Okay, so now we are ready to drill down the trajectory. So we are using a drill uh, to avoid any unnecessary power put on the tools uh, when we are drilling down the trajectory. And as you can see on the navigation screen, uh, the drilling trajectory is exactly identical to the planned trajectory, so we can go ahead and drill it down. The drill length will be 30 millimeters uniformly and I would drill full speed all the way in and out. Now we have a drill down trajectory and we are ready to continue with the screw insertion. So I pull out the teeth canal and I would use a tap. So tap is also going down and as you can see the, the, the navigation the navigator tool will have minor alteration as I work because of those very mild movements between the reference frame and the actual instrument. And then, uh, and then, and then now we are ready for the screws. So we have the screws pre-planned. We can have the uh, the uh, uh, scrub tech prepare the screw before we even started drilling it. The screw is already prepared. Making sh she's making sure that this is the correct screw because she's ha she have it on my small screen here, which we share. And we also use a power tool to insert the screw. We can verify on the navigation screen that we're good. And also we can use it to control for the depth. Okay, so now I'm happy with the trajectory and the depth. I will detach the drill and ready to go to the next screw. Bear in mind that we are using the Voyager screws which have those bridges for the MIS uh, rod insertion. So the system recognizes those towers and you will be able to see the robotic arm pulling out along the tower without even, with, a, with almost not touching it. It will not wiggle it and, or, or uh, apply any force to the bridge. It will pull out along the trajectory for the full length of the bridge and only then it will move to the next trajectory.